Hey, Ronnie here from Four Wheeling in Western Australia. Welcome to Modified episode number 17, where we share with you vehicles that have been accessorized and modified for everyday use and full driving. Introducing the owner to you, Jonathan, how you going? Hi mate, how you going? Good mate. Uh, nice GQ you got here. Thanks mate. Do you want to tell our audience yeah. the model? Well, it's a 93 Nissan GQ Patrol with a TD42 engine and it's behind a five speed manual um, and it's live axles front and rear um, with just locking hubs at the front and factory LSD in the rear. We'll, uh, we'll go through all the aspects of the vehicle and we'll start with the bar work. Jonathan, bar work. Yeah, what so got, mate? a bit of bar work on here. We've got a Millworld commercial bar from Millworld Customs and that runs a worn high mount, a rebuilt worn high mount winch in it um, with a six horsepower motor and with the, um, the custom fair lead and uh, all the rest of the little bits and pieces that come with it. So, so I mean, you just need to wire it up and get the rope yeah, on it? Yeah, halfway through um, rebuilding it. So I just got to put the rope in it, the Dyneema rope and just run the power. So That's that um, be done. pretty good access you got here. Yeah, it's all nice and open. The bar's really good for access so you can see it. Uh, if anything goes wrong with it, so that's... Where do you really plug handy. the controller in? Usually you have the cords running from here and you run it through the engine bay and you have mount the You got a switch oil. inside. Yeah, and then you have the switches in, in cab. Oh, this nice. makes it easier and keeps them out of the elements. Yeah. So it doesn't get rusty and not work when you need it the most. That's a good idea. And this bash plate's part of the bar work, eh? Yeah, it's all one bar, so it's all protected. Um, it's got the recovery points on it and all the tow hitches and all the bits and pieces you need on it, so it's a all-in-one yep. package really when you get these bars, which is good. So this bar is designed to be recovered from? Yeah, yep. It's got the um, reco um, rated recovery mounts on there with the holes supplied, and it's all strong bolted to the chassis. And that diff cover, that looks serious. Yeah, so we got a, um, a Superior Engineering diff brace cover, just a weld-on kit. Braces on all through the knuckles and stuff, so if you do a bit of you know, jumping or whatever, you sort of you don't bend your diff straight away. Oh, you've you... welded the whole axle, I see. Yeah, up above there, I've, um, yeah, welded also, it's all braced. So if you jump or anything, it sort of, it won't bend the diff. Strengthened, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just a bit of extra security when you're going out bush somewhere and your last thing you want is bending a diff. That's so. solid. Has. So brush rails and side steps or rock sliders? Yep, custom made by Mike at Accelerate Fabrications there, just in Bassendine. That was really handy, custom made and all the checker plate on top to stop dome chips and stuff hitting the paintwork on the on the doors. It looks very solid. Yeah, you've done a good job. I've given a good workout and landed on it a few times there and oh, you have? held up. Yeah. You know, they're perfect condition, so very happy with his work. I recommend him. Awesome. So and I see you got a rear bar as well, so move on to that. So your rear bar, um, you were saying us by Yeah, Mike at Accelerate Fabrications. So I thought I had the slides and stuff done, so I thought I'd get the rear bar done with him too. So he did the quarter chop and made it the how I wanted it to carry a 35 and have the option to carry a second 35 or some jerry cans and you know recovery gear if I wanted. Nice. And so this light, this light thing's all part of the yeah, yep. So that light bar extends up. It's, it's extendable, so you can work around and cover your whole campsite quite well. So it's all removable, which yeah. is nice. And you're saying he did the quarter chop as well? Yeah, yeah. So he did all the quarter chop and the paint work and the... Well, that looks pretty neat, doesn't it? Yeah, I was really happy with it. There was no bogging or anything involved, so it came up really well, which I was happy with because I was quite fussy with the job it, yeah. that would be happening on it. So. so yeah, all in all, it's been a good job in the end because I was a bit hesitant to cut a quarter chop or with the quarters of perfect condition, but I thought before I dent him, I'll just cut That's him and put be. a bar on, yeah. We'll move on to your roof rack now. Yeah, so running just a ARB Deluxe roof rack, the aluminium one. Kept it lightweight with the aluminium and a full cage to be able to stick the fox wing on and any solar panels and recovery gear that I need. Yeah, it's quite handy when we go away um, to have that one. So, yeah. or otherwise, if we do longer trips, we um, I have the ARB rooftop tent with the other cage to carry the rooftop tent. So I either swap depending on where we go. Oh, you, so you swap, the, you got another Cage at home, yeah. so you swap for the rooftop tent. Yep, yeah. so if you do shorter trips, we'll just put this one on with the swag. Otherwise, if we go away more, I'll put the rooftop tent on and set up a bit more of a tourist style. You definitely need a roof rack with a wagon, don't you? Yep, it's definitely un wasted space if you don't use the roof. With the fox wind, do you have the enclosure as well? Yeah, I've got a couple of the sides for that. So it's good when it's windy, you can sort of park up and have a little area at the back there where you're cooking. Lights and communications. We'll start with your lights? Yep, it's too easy. I noticed these are definitely yep. not the Yeah, no, nah, I had the normal 
um, low globes with the H4 globes and stuff in the normal lights, and I thought they weren't good enough um, light output. So I looked around, but I wanted something um, ADR approved. So you had the HIDs in and stuff. So I went the LEDs, which are ADR approved. So these LED lights, which give good light, which I'm happy with. Are they uh, adjustable? Yeah, yep, they adjust up and down a little bit, which is nice. Light bar? Yep, I've got a 40 inch Aurora light bar up top there. It, that's probably all the light I need really at night when I'm driving, so that gives a real good output. And then I just run those black covers at, in the daytime just to sort of keep it out of, you know, hidden from the way from people stealing it or yeah. from other people. So it just sort of hides it away so it blends in a little bit, which is nice. Yeah, we can't tell they're there unless you really... Yeah, yeah. so... Well, aerials, you got, these are both UHF? Uh, I've got the big one there is a UHF one. That's for the 80 channel GME. And then the other one is a phone cable. Oh, that's a phone cable? Yeah, for the connected to a striker cradle kit, just for the iPhone. Um, that's just for a bit more extra range. We are now onto tyres and lift. So, Jonathan, tyres, yep. start with so your tyres. So, we got a set of 35 by 12.515 BFG KM2s, just the mud terrain tyre. Um, I found them, they're quite good on the beach and the mud, so a bit of an all rounder kite tyre, which is quite good. Um, how, how many Ks have you done on, on these? These are roughly uh, five to 10,000 Ks old. These are quite new still, so they're very quiet still on the road. Yeah. Um, but my last set, I wore down to about 30,000 and they're still you know, quite good. Oh, road. so you had these before as well? Yeah, I had these before, yep. And then I upgraded to a new set when I had the chance to do that, so. Yeah. So good. they only last you 30,000? Nah, they're good. They get, you get about 80 to 100,000 if you rotate them and look after yeah. them properly. Um, but yeah, I had the opportunity to upgrade to a new set for a good price, so. Oh, I understand you. Yeah. I've done it a few times. <laughs> yeah, so I thought, why not? When I got the new, when the new rims came with it as well. What rims are they? They're um, just a set of flat out off-road steel beadlocks. Um, I sort of just went, I set of them just for when you go away more to the rough stuff, you can sort of let your tyres right down without worrying about it um, rolling off the bead and you know things like that. So especially on the, yeah. on the beach as well, you can really air your tyres down to low, low pressures. It's hard to get a unique looking steel rim and they actually look yeah. pretty unique. Specific offset on these? Yeah, they're a negative 30. Negative 30? Negative 30, To yep. bring your stands out? Yep, so they bring it out a fair bit, but it still yeah. fits inside the guards. So yeah. on, onto your lift now, lift yep. kit? Yep, I run a uh, three inch lift, uh, running mostly superior gear. I think I have the new, three inch medium rate coils in there, front and rear. Um, and then I also have the superior hybrid superflex arms at the front of the car, which allows for a bit more flex and a bit more comfort on the road when driving. I find them to be really good um, with them. And then I have all the superior engineering control arms and steering arms and all the other bits and pieces that go with it. Um, as well as the, I've got the new superior engineering heavy duty sway bar in the rear. So I keep that on full time to sort of stabilize when there's a bit more weight on the car. So you mentioned you got a sway bar in the rear, so is that something you got to do on these when you go three inch and above in lift? Generally, um, when you go about a two inch lift or above, you have to start extending the sway bar links. So even at a two inch lift, you should really... Yeah, yeah, it'd be handy to do it at a two inch lift, but usually you can get away sometimes with the standard sway bar, yeah. but you do have to extend it uh, most of the time just to be safe. But I recommend it. Then if you've got a little bit more weight in the back of the car or you start getting a bit heavier, I recommend um, upgrading to a heavy duty sway bar. So we're going to check out Jonathan's power plant on the GQ. Well, uh, that's far from standard. Yeah, so... I only see a... one battery though. You got two batteries? Yeah, I actually, I have two batteries, but it's not in at the moment because I recently put a new, that airbox in, that custom airbox from Fats Fabrication. I wanted a bit better airflow for the engine. Yeah. So when I redid the snorkel I put the airbox in and I had to pull the battery out. It used to sit right there where the, where the airbox oh, was. Oh yeah, so you got the big intake coming so, around. Yeah, I used to have the big box there. And the, Is that a five inch intake here? No, nah, just four inch. It's That's four? Yeah, four inch straight through the turbo. It looks the bigger snorkel. than four. <laughs> yeah, so it was cutting it back to power a little bit, and, which was, we wanted as much airflow as we could and yeah. you know, less limiting airflow. So we yeah, went through and put four inch the whole way, which is really allowed to breathe a lot better. So we're coming in through a four inch snorkel, yeah? Yep, four inch um, moonlight fabrication snorkel. And then they redid that, which is nice, how I wanted it. And then that goes into the FATS box, four inch all the way through into a United Fuel Injection um, 18G turbo, which is specialty turbos. So that um, gives a lot of up and go. So it's about 180, 190 kilowatt now with a United Fuel Injection turbo. And then also paired with that, there was a um, diesel central 12 mil fuel pump down here, which was upgraded as well as the turbo. So that just allows a bit more fuel to go through the engine. How much boost are you pushing? Uh, it's about 22 
PSI, um, yeah. which is quite safe still. I didn't want to push it too much because the engine's quite quite good still. Um, yeah, it's quite quite new. Wise choice, yeah. Yeah, I so I thought I don't want to really do a yeah. crank or anything straight away. So I put that in and then also paired to that to help it breathe a little better. I've got the cross country top mount intercooler up on the top here. Um, that just sort of allows the engine to breathe a lot better, a lot cooler. So you've done this foam here to trap the air so yeah, it doesn't that, go past it? Yeah, this all comes with the um, cooler when you buy it and it comes with its own bonnet scoop on top so it seals to the bonnet. Oh, so you got the bonnet scoop with that came with the yeah, intercooler? Yeah, this came with one and then we also put the custom 79 series V8 um, Land Cruiser scoop on I it. I thought it looked um, very yeah. similar. Yeah, so I wanted yeah. something a bit um, neater and tidier so I moulded um, moulded a scoop on top of the factory GQ bonnet. I thought I recognised that bulge in it, it looked yeah. very similar. <laughs> yeah, so I was pretty happy with that, which is nice, something different to the old GQ. You got a f um, fuel manager kit in here? No, nah, no fuel manager kit, it's sitting there ready to go. Your second battery, where is that going to go now? That'll mount, because I'm actually doing a false floor in the rear of the car, I've pulled the back seats ah, out, so that'll try yeah. and get mounted back there, out of the way. So we're at the back of the vehicle now, obviously, and Looking at, so you got a wheelie bin bag on the back here? Yep, just something to put the rubbish in when you go camping and then you drop in the bin when you get home, mm. so. They're good ideas. I usually throw rubbish in the back. I've got to look at one of these though. It just stinks in the back It's sometimes. good for your wet clothes, your wet, wet suits and stuff. Yeah. So just chuck them in there as well. I suppose it doubles as a, um, protects your tyre as well. Yeah, a bit from the sun. Yeah, it just gives it a bit of protection and mm. stop it from wearing out. So. All right, let's open her up. Cool. So you're running heat shield in all the windows, I see? Yep, the solar guard, those, the custom made for the GQ, all through the back um, two doors and the back doors and the rear ones as well. It's just sort of keep the back of the car cool, let the fridge run a bit easier. And yeah. I suppose just so no one can see what's in the back of the car if you leave the car and go walking somewhere or at the yeah. beach. So just out of sight, out of mind. Eh? eyes, yeah. Yep. Table? Yep, I've got a fold down table, just a stainless steel one, which I've stuck to the back door, which is quite handy for on the side of the road. If you want to you know, cook a quick meal with a gas cooker or something, sort of yeah. do what you got to do, prepare and get the stuff out of the fridge. Quite simple with a couple of the clips there. Out of your way, you wouldn't even know it was there. Drawers? Yeah. yeah. And have you got the back seats in or out? Or no, folded down? the back seats are out. I've started, I put the drawers in and then I had the back seats in there, but I thought there were quite a bit of dead space having the seats there, you don't use them. Yeah. So I've started, I'm halfway through making a, um, a false floor to follow on from this, which will allow me to use the space and stack things properly and just you know, put things away and keep them lower to the ground. Planning on sleeping on it too? or? Yeah, I can do, possibly. Be able to like, roll a mattress out or something if you don't have all this stuff in there. If you go for a real short trip, yeah. you can just roll it out. But I'm probably a bit tall for it. I've tried a few times, but worst comes to worst, you can always jump in the back there, which is nice. Yep. Just better have the option too. Oh, better than sleeping in your driver's seat. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Fridge, what yeah, size? Just a uh, 40 litre angle. It's a few years old now, but it's still as good as it was when it was brand new. So that works well with the drop, MSA. Drop down slide. Yeah, just the MSA drop down fridge slide. And it's got the barrier as well with it there, just to allow you to stack things up to use the space efficiently. Double Store. swag? Yeah, just a double swag there. So that, that usually goes on the roof or inside, depending on where we're going. Um, it's easy just to roll out. Double yeah. swag and usually take a couple of deck chairs just for the beach as well. Yeah. Stick them on the roof and whatnot. So plenty of space in there and you always stick all your sleeping and your camping needs. What have we got in here? So, usually on this side we keep um, a few tools and the recovery gear. Just the general tools here, recovery gear at the back. Yeah, yeah, I wanted them as long as possible to use the space. And just general bits and pieces that you use for working on the car in case something happens. Yeah. And then the other side is more of just a cooking side. So you stick just a little, a little gas cooker and just all your, your requirements you need for you know, starting fires or barbies or yeah, all the cooking food and your utensils all go in here. So, so I differentiate the both of them, keep them separate. Rightio, we are now in the interior of the GQ. And Jonathan, let's we'll start with your radio. Put a custom sound system in it, just running an Alpine deck, some splits front and rear and the front and rear doors. And at the back, some six by nines, just with two amps at the back, a couple of Alpine amps. I noticed you had a speaker in the back door as well. Yep, that's just the six by nines in the back there, yeah. just for a bit of extra oomph when you have the back doors open when you're sitting at camp, which is good. Oh yeah, and camp, camp oomph. <laughs> yeah, and then the dual batteries come in handy for that one. And your uh, GME? Just a 80 channel there, TX 4500. You yeah. know, do the higher channels with the 80 channel one, so a bit more privacy when you're yeah. you know, talking between friends and... Turbo timer? Yep, just a turbo timer, which is 
helps you know when you park up somewhere just to cool down everything let it cool yeah. down so you're not sitting there having to wait for two minutes you got a so you got a locker front locker yep i got a front arb air locker yes. in there because you got the strong lc in the rear yep yeah yep it's perfect i wouldn't want to pull that one out just yet yep so so you're part of the patrol crew that disagrees with my locker video <laughs> locker video oh yeah no our lockers are good even their yeah. e-lockers would be nice um yeah. but yeah front one is does the job quite yeah. quite happily at the moment well, lsd on these is yeah Unreal. And you mentioned you got a roof console coming, but they gave it the wrong bolts. Yeah, just got an outback, outback yep. roof console up there, just to be able to put the UHF up top there out of the way. Uh, but yeah, just got the wrong mounting kit, so yep. just waiting for that to come so I can finish that off. And these storage pockets? And just, yeah, a custom canvas guy, sort of, I wanted some pockets to be able to store stuff up oh, in the Oh, these are canvas, are they? Yeah. I mean, I mean, custom, sorry. Yeah, just custom canvas ones. Um, I oh, so the, the brand is custom canvas? No, nah, he's, the name was PM them. canvas. PM canvas. PM canvas products. But um, he custom made these for you. Yeah, yeah I wanted it a little bit wider just to sort of fill these spaces ah, up. Yeah. I had smaller ones before, so okay. that's handy just to store your phone and stuff. And it's out yeah. of the weather, it's insulated, so it sort of protects it from the sun. I notice you've got a uh, ch uh, chair here from a Falcon? Yeah, Ford picked up Falcon. a couple of um, XR Falcon seats from the FG model. Do um, they bolt straight in? There's slight modifications with it. Um, just a couple of mounting, drilled some new holes and a spacer on one side, but yeah. otherwise pretty straightforward to fit in. Just for a more comfortable ride Yeah, for so much trips. more comfortable for the longer trips. You just okay. sit into the bucket and a lot better yeah. than the factory seats, that's for sure. Yep. So your missus stuck with the factory seat? Yeah, she's stuck with the factory one for now. Her mate stole my spare one at the moment. He needed one, but um, <laughs> I'll get that back and put that straight yep. back in. So just waiting on that one. But And what's going on in the back here? So that's the back shelf you're talking about? Yeah, I, just, I pulled the back seats out and just extended the um, false floor from the drawers. So there's a flat level working bench the whole way through. Um, I use the back underneath as a shelf as well to store like the bigger plastic containers for some of your cooking gear and stuff. Yeah. Um, just so you can keep it low to the ground and utilize the space a bit better. It was a bit dead before having the big seats there. Yep. I found just sort of wasting the space in the back of the wagon. So um, yeah, so it works out well. I'm just finishing that off, waiting for a few bits and pieces. And then I'll put a um, cargo barrier behind the front seats here to sort of mount like a, some electrical stuff, like an inverter and Oh yeah. A few yeah. bits and pieces and have a little cage here, a few rack of just hanging stuff so you can stick like a you know, bottle of water yeah. or just something out of the way. Yeah. Q&A, you ready? Yep, yep. First question, what would you recommend for someone who just bought a GQ? Like obviously it'll be second hand. Yep, yep. And it's fairly stock. What's the first three things in no specific order you recommend doing to it? I'd recommend um, maybe a small lift, maybe two to three inch lift, and then maybe a set of 33s, 35s, you know, for a first car or second hand. Um, that's probably adequate enough for GQ. Um, probably bar work. Bar work's the most important one. Front bars, scrub bars to protect your body and yep. the seals. That's the main one. So bar work, two to three inch lift, yep. and tyres. Yep. Yep. So you got your protection and you got your capability straight yep. off. So what is the one thing you must have for you personally, when you go full driving camping? Yep. Probably recovery gear if you get stuck. Um, but a, a second option, if you don't have recovery gear and you're stuck, probably a fridge full of beer. <laughs> that's always handy to buy time when you're waiting to be recovered. Yep. That's probably the main ones. And depending on how long you're waiting, yep, you might be in a funny long. state. Yep, that's it. <laughs> so you got to cover all bases. I like that one. What made you decide to get a GQ? Um, what made me decide? Well, the first car I was looking for, and Dad used to own this one from brand new, so he was going to sell it. So I thought, why not buy this? It was, you know, perfect condition, all clean, um, stock standard. So I thought, why not drive that as the first car? And and then sort of the bug hit, and I was sort of yeah, yeah. It once is the bug hits, today. yeah. yeah. So. And what's your three top trips in no specific order? Probably one of the better trips I've done would be Esperance and east of Esperance, along around that coastline there. Oh, around Israelite Bay. And yeah, through there. I've seen just the beaches are. Um, perfect, just about the squeaky clean sand and the water, and yeah, it's really nice down there. Um, and then probably through um, the Fitzgerald National Park. Oh, that's to the west of yeah, the, around yeah. around Albany and through like Denmark and stuff along that sort of bottom corner. Yeah, that's, I quite like all that stuff down there. And then probably up around Wedge, um, Durian Bay, those sort of up that sort of area there. Um, I've not had the opportunity to go any further yet, but that's probably my three yep. top spots I, I find and where I've been so far. Yeah, awesome. So you like the beach then? Yeah, I love the beach. A lot yeah. of bit of mud too, like Harvey, Brunswick and all that, but yeah. I do get more time to go camping on the beach and enjoy myself more instead of rough stuff all the time. Yeah. What's your future mod for the GQ? Uh, probably finish all the auto electrical stuff in the car. 
redo all the dual batteries and put some fuse box in and just tidy up all the wiring to sort of get Oh, it. under that shelf you showed us before? Yeah, all that. Put some power inverters in and just some nice little creature comforts yeah. to sort of make it a bit easier inside. I think a lot of the out, outside mechanical work's done, I think. Well, thanks for having your GQ on, mate. No worries. Pleasure. Yeah. Righto folks, so many of you requested a GQ patrol. There you go, there's one right there with plenty of mods to it. Now, and I'll find with the GQ as well, because it's um it's like a like an earlier model vehicle, there's no airbag restrictions yep. and electronics and emissions and all that. Yep. So it's a lot easier to mod, isn't it? Yep, yep. Back to basics, easy yeah. to push. That's it. Uh, great great first car and, and great car to keep hold on if you can keep it in that kind of nick. So yeah. Uh, you can subscribe right here, and if you want to know more about this GQ, see the link below in the description, and that'll have more detailed on the modifications and some photos. Thanks for watching. Catch you in another video.